I'm Duran. And I'm Ronio. In today's episode, we're going to real quickly go over autopsy. Not for the intent of showing you how to use autopsy. There are plenty of tutorials on autopsy. But to show you a couple tips and tricks, but also to show you why it's not my favorite tool. And, I, and why it sucks. And why it sucks. That's exactly right. <laughs> now, before I get into that, Ronyo, I know you're familiar with autopsy. Can you tell us a little bit about how you've used it in the past and uh, how generally it's used within our industry? Well, for me, um, I used it when I was a security engineer. And normally they would give me, if somebody left the company, they would want me to use the tool to be able to see if they took anything sensitive or any sensitive information. Um, if some, if there were some malware, I would do some incident response using that tool. Not much like a digital forensics person would, but I would just kind of do some incident response to see if there were malware on there and how it got on there and uh, see if I can uh, do something about that or I would write it up in a report and then we would give it to a digital forensics person if it was that serious um, But a majority of the stuff was more for incident response um, That's what I used it for and we used that we use in case um, and that's majority of what we did Let's look for malware and uh, See if anybody took anything sensitive and there was a, another point where somebody actually infiltrated the, the system and they were a disgruntled employee. So I had to document that, report that, and give it to a digital forensic specialist. So with, th with that said, actually, uh, for those who don't know, in case there's another competing tool, FTK, those are both commercial products. They're very similar, extraordinarily similar. You'll find they suffer similarly to autopsy. <laughs> uh, and yeah. And no matter what, this really comes down to a fool with the tool is still a fool, right? So you can have all the pretty user interfaces you want, but if you don't know how to use it, if you don't know how to leverage the system, you're not going to achieve the desired result. And if you don't understand the weaknesses of the system, then you can go and set yourself up for failure in anything you want, anything you do. I find it interesting that your organization was actually analyzing the computers of people who left, but it's not unusual. Believe it or not, that's actually more common than I think a lot of people realize. It's one of the reasons why we always say you should separate completely your personal life and your work life. And I don't care if they tell you it's okay if you log into your home email from work and if you you know do shopping from work, don't, don't do it on your work computer. Use your you know, use your smartphone or something else and stay out their network because they will monitor it and they are allowed to monitor it. Man, without even having to get to the hard drive, we, I've seen so many things just monitoring and, and mm -hmm. it was crazy when I used to be that person that was being monitored and I'm like, how the hell are they, what the hell are they doing? Like, why? And, you know, they, they do monitor everything, even uh, your ch <laughs> hip chats, mm -hmm. slacks, everything, and they have the right to. So, yeah, it's best to separate. Get your own personal machine, do all your business on there, and then do your work business on your work machine. That's exactly right. And if for no other reason, then your privacy may be violated. And, yeah, sure, they may be consummate professionals who aren't going to wander off and show all your data to everyone and or, or talk about your various proclivities that happen to be on your, your work computer. But you also run the risk, let's say you were doing something and making a little money on the side, some hobby or something like that, they can actually claim it's theirs. They can claim that you were using corporate resources, therefore they own it, therefore you owe them. Yep. Yep. So yeah, they don't do anything on your machine. Don't do anything that's money making. Don't do anything at all. Um, unless you know that it's not that really big of a deal, then, hey, do what you do. But don't do that. And that goes back to separating or segmentation of, you know, your machines or segmentation of everything. Uh, everything should have its purpose, right? Yeah, definitely. So this is an example of some sample systems that I've analyzed. There's nothing on these systems. There's nothing on these devices. They're not from anyone or anywhere, but it's fake data. 
one of the big things that you have to understand when you're working in autopsy is by default in any of these views it's only going to show you 10,000 records so you may have 50,000 records but it only shows you 10,000 that's important when you're doing something like flagging the data and, and things of that nature and you actually have to go into options and the most that you can wind up setting it to is 50,000. When we're inside the options in the view section, we see this maximum number of results to show in a table. That you need to set to 50,000. That's the maximum it will go in this current version. When we wind up looking at these, if the setting is too low, let's say it's at default of 10,000, then when I actually walk through the tables, I'm going to be missing data. If I'm walking through, for example, the images, I'm going to miss data. And that really becomes critical when we're looking at, say, the cache and we're trying to sort. So you sit there and you think that you sorted by that date created so that you can see the most recent web activity, but you're not because all you see is it sort within the existing table, which is only showing you a set number. So if we had, in this case, more than 50,000 results, I wouldn't see most of the data in it. If, for example, we go to this one where I've got a lot more web data, there are 110,000 cookies here. This thing will show me at most 50,000. And when it's sorting, it's only sorting on the 50,000 that it sees. So I'm actually missing most of the cookies. And there's no way for me to really see them inside of this table. And if I go tr and try to do, say, uh, one of the other views, like the thumbnail view, etc., I fall into the same problem. So I'm actually not seeing all of the data. Now, when I export everything, not via the save table as CSV, but by actually running a report, an export report, then it will give me all the records. And it, then I can, you know, parse through the records. But that defeats the point and purpose of this user interface. If the user interface is so that I can flag things and I can mark things and I can say, oh, well, this one's important to me, so I'm going to flag it, but I can't actually do anything with that because I'm missing most of the data, then what is the point in this user interface? And by default, it only shows 10,000. So that would be missing more than 10 elevenths of the data, <laughs> actually. So, I mean, that is a, a huge percentage of your data lost. Well over 90% of, uh, of those cookies, I wouldn't see. And there's no way I could see it through this interface. What is your preference on uh what you would use besides these i actually autopsy winds up running a whole bunch of tools in the background instead so it runs things like fls it runs depending on what you select for the ingest modules it runs different things but fls stat etc cetera, etc cetera. and then when it finds say a uh, Google Chrome SQL Lite database, then it parses that and and things of that nature. Plus, it runs Reg Ripper and a whole bunch of other tools. My preference is actually running the individual tools because I can run it on what I want and only the things I want. But I can also just output the data in a format that is useful to me for my reporting purposes and for my searching purposes. I'll give you a good example. Plazo. So the version of Plazo that this version of Autopsy runs is from 2018. And it has a known bug where it actually is prone to looping ad infinitum and never coming back. If mm. instead you run more recent versions, number one, there's been a major release since this, since what Autopsy is using. And this autopsy is new. They just can't, the, the real problem autopsy is having is uh, some of the underlying tools that it calls to will not work in Windows right now, at least not currently. 
So they can't pour over the newer versions of Plazo. They can't pour over the newer versions of a lot of their tools. And so you're, that goes back to, I don't understand why they're doing it on Windows. All right. I, I, I really don't. Windows is actually the worst environment to do digital forensics in because I can do easily software write blocking in Linux. I can mount anything in any way, shape, or form that I want in Linux. That's not the same with Windows. With Windows, I have to add on a lot of custom software and tools in order to get the same effects that are actually just part of Linux. And one of the really nice things, though, is if you go through and you run the tools individually, not only can I select the output however I want, but it tends to be faster, partially because I'm telling it what to look for, right? So if I'm running Plazo myself, for example, number one, I get to run the most recent version of Plazo, which works, is considerably more efficient, finds a lot more data than the version that, that this is running, and sorts it better. So it's a significant improvement. And you're talking about over uh, three years worth of development, almost four years worth of development at this point, that is missing from the version of Plaza that this 2022 build of Autopsy happens to be using. And it's not just Plaza. Their Reg Ripper and a whole assortment of other tools are just subpar compared to the modern versions, and they cannot update it. They just can't. And I'll show you a good example of this. So if we look at this first system here, laptop, and we count how many cookies we have, supposedly we have 3,219 cookies that it's found, and it's found in the web history, 154 items, artifacts, I should say, and it's found uh, 16, I'm sorry, it's found 1,692 web cache artifacts but if i look at the exact same if i look at the exact same output from plazo this is just looking at the web portion nothing else so this is just the web portion and this is only the web portion from this year i have 2652 items just looking at web cache data and web searches and web history data. If I look at the entire web data from this laptop, Plazo, the recent version of Plazo, pulls 16,932 artifacts. The differences are ridiculous. That's more than four times the amount of data that Plazo found than what Autopsy using an old version of Plazo and using FLS and using their little uh, Google Chrome parser and all that stuff was able to find. Okay. So it would be best just for people to use. It, you already know what to use, just use the Linux tools. Right, exactly. That's exactly right. Before anyone thinks that we're really going after autopsy, I want to say autopsy does have some great benefits. It's very easy to comb through thumbnails without having to generate them yourself, which you could do, or copy the files over. So I could go through and pull the files myself using FLS or test disk or, you know, photo rec or whatever makes me happy. But if I'm looking, say, for images of pornography, and there are less than 50,000 photos on the computer, which actually, or at least photos of a certain type, because you can do it based off the file type, then Plazo is not your best option. Doing it manually is not your best option. Instead, your best option may in fact be to use FTK in case or autopsy. But if what you're doing is more in depth, which is almost always the case where I need to figure out, well, how did the files get there? Did this person look at pornography, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, then Definitely, you're going to want to do it the manual way. And just to give you an example, here's actually a report from autopsy on that laptop. And you'll see from the web history, for example, we've got 
only 155 items in the web history. That's it. Whereas again, using Plaza, we have significantly more items in the web history. In the cache, we only have 1,692 items. Again, that's, that's across all the time span. That's not just looking at 2022 data. So it is finding so much less. Oh, and by the way, according to this, the last time someone used a website that was cached was in January, mid-January. Whereas if you look in Plazo, we have them using it, in this case, from all the way up to when I made the sample. So I made it in mid-March. So we've got the history all the way up into mid-March. So I've got months missing from the web cache, according to autopsy. Like no one's even touched this computer in months, according to autopsy. That's crazy. It really is. It really is. And, and for anyone who's maybe a little leery about using these tools yourself, what I would tell you is your best bet, actually, if you're trying to get into something like digital forensics, is to use a a GUI is to use a user interface like autopsy at first. So you understand how the systems work and you understand maybe at a very high level, the kinds of things that you want to look for. And then you start using the tools yourself. Then you are using FLS. Then you are using stat. Then you are using, you know, uh, reg ripper or any of those kinds of tools. And there are a lot of other tools in Red Ripper that you can use, and some are better, depending on what you're after, to parse through the Windows registry. And you can use Plazo, and you can take your pick as to how you want to open up the uh, various Google and Firefox, and uh, I should say the various Chrome and Firefox browser artifacts and Edge artifacts of safari and so on and so forth but well that's all for today hopefully you guys learned something hopefully there's something of use maybe it'll give you a little better idea what you're doing when you're working with something like in case or ftk and why it might not be the best thing and that includes even tools like celebrate which is made for working with cell phones and, yep. and various other tools there, oftentimes the thing that is one click and you get everything isn't the best tool for the job. Please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And if you want more content like this, please comment down below uh, anything that you're interested in, new topics, and we'll try to add them into our uh, list of things to actually show for the next episode. Um, until then, I'm Ronnie. I'm Duran. And... Later. Have fun.